Okay, I'm gonna have a little fun now. Let's talk about the, uh, it's not really fun, is it? But it's fun for you guys. Um, the uh, Hard Rock Hotel. Let's talk about floor 16. Let's just consider this, and of course the scale is wrong and it's not I-beams, but it's steel and it's gonna interact together. This is a L-shaped L steel, so it's not gonna deflect as much. Out here is also a uh, L-shaped steel, so it's not gonna deflect as much. This would be the larger steel, the 13 inch, uh, uh, the larger steel on the outside. This will be floor 15. This is the smaller steel in the center, and there was another span here. But I'm only going to focus on one one side of this because I that's the way I set this up. I had to cut off, I cut a band, cut some pieces off of this. Um, and this will be the outer wall. This will be the beam. This will be your your uh, your, your uh, beam, maybe a lower floor. And this would have more across another floor below. But um, we're going to go with. Well, I'm just going to show you reactions to help you understand it better, visualize it. This is where the floor 16 loads onto 15, right right in the middle of it. It's actually off, it's off by, I think it's off this direction? Was it off that direction? Right off center line, just a little bit. So the, uh, I'm, just, I'm just gonna load from the center to help uh, for, this, for this point, for this uh, point I'm trying to make. This will be the column from 16, 17, 18, and the roof materials. Watch the outside column. This would be this guy here. Just imagine, let me just put a load here. I'm gonna just apply a load here. And you see it flex out? That's the forces that it, it's experience, experiencing, experiencing if this was just a straight column. That's why you size it such to defeat that so it doesn't flex and experience that motion. Also, you never wanna, you don't want this one to cause that reaction. So this one would also not, um, it would, it would fail. Ideally, you want it to fail at the connection before it started buckling that. Um, before we started buckling that and grossing other floors. You want, you, you ideally, one floor to fail at a time, right? So uh, that would be ideally, but you don't want them to fail at all. But this is two floors interacting with each other. If that's pushing out, and this in the flooring here, it's creating a, uh, the connection here for that floor, would be experiencing a, a stress and tension across the across the floor. If that was there, if that floor was there though, it wouldn't even experience it at all. It, we wouldn't see it experienced. So I cut that out, cut a band out that was crossed there to show, help you visualize how forces forces are. Any engineer watching, you know, of course you're gonna say, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. You've got to put a, the right eye, col eye beam there and columns and uh, yeah, but th this doesn't help the layman understand how this stuff reacts, does it? So relax yourself, please, and just enjoy the ride. So um, again, we push down on this, and now you see reactions. Take note here, though. This also has a, a reaction at this joint. It has a torque to it. Let me see if I... I'm trying to hold the camera and do it. It's a rotational torque. Let's go to the very end and watch it. See it torques rotational torque inwards? That rotational torque would 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 be stress on the bolts and the shear plates over there. Same thing would be happening over here. Coming back to here to help you guys visualize it. Here's the column, and as you force as this deflects down because this can't take the loads, any deflection on this will cause a a uh, reaction here, whether it's going to be failure of the connection or it's going to start causing this to rotate and possibly want the shear off of there because of a torque, torsion like this, rotating this way. And that bolt system being loaded, see if I'm torque, if I put a bolt at the end, if I put a plate at the very end there, at the bottom, okay. Now, give me a second here, I'm trying to do this. If I had a plate here, an L-shaped plate, as I rotate it, the torque, it would be Pushing on this bottom uh, bolt in shear going this direction and the top one will be pulling on it that way um, In shear that direction the plate As it rotates if the plate was on that side other side it's opposite if it's two-sided It's uh, even Steven same deal, but even Steven it's going to be much more reinforced two-sided can um, 
I guess I can give you images if you guys are wondering. I can, you can just ask, and I'll do it, put an image up right below your question that you can look at, and I'll highlight it and show you what I'm talking about. But so to help you with that, I gotta, I can't just make videos every time, right? Over and over again. So I, I need to be able to respond to you and adapt in the comment sections to improve the, uh, the content and and the uh, narrative to get you guys understanding it. So the deflection here, any deflection here, which we which we state is overloaded, if it deflects, it's going to start putting stress on its own connection where it connects into this I beam over here, the floor beam and where it connects into the uh, floor beam over here. This beam here is, is uh, this beam is the same size as the beam here and the beam here. These three are the same size. But out here where, the, where it's transferring the load, no column present. Out here, as far as I know, the column's back here. I just have this rigged up this way. It's like I said, I cut parts out of it. So, um, out here, this is the larger one. Let's just call this, oh gosh, I forget what it was. Um, is it 16? This is like 19, 18? I don't know what this is here. And it's, it's a larger piece of steel, weighs more. It's more substantial. It's here, and it's also over here, same one. But the, but the loads that instead of having this same one guy here and also two here not that it w might have it would have la lasted much longer um because it, well let me just go it would have lasted much longer um now we need to find these steel is all you got to do find this steel in the rubble and see how it failed each one how, how did it fail now what would stop part of this deflection is the concrete and the uh, Nelson studs, the studs sticking up all the way down here. To stop this rotation, this rotation. Hey, okay, I'm just doing a little video. Yeah, oh, it's hiding behind here. Yeah, sorry, I'll be done in just a minute. I've got to change my clothes, wash, my, wash up a little bit. I'm ready. So the Nelson studs would stop if the concrete was interacting with the steel. It would want to stop some of that rotation. But they butt the steel decking all together all the all the concrete deck uh, steel decking together i think here they don't overlap it like the plans call for and i'll show you that in the plans not in this video but another video where even in the plans if you go to the steel selection i think it's under steel or decking i forget what parts they even mention you will cross each one of these th three times at least the car cross them and they didn't cross three times they went one but let's call it but so that's one cross and then the next piece is another butt. So this system, this this uh, um, composite deck system, is not working as it's per even their own instructions as it's designed to. It can't it can't interact with the deck as much going across the steel as it just as it's just butting. So they butt the steel, they put the studs in, they put the con they put rebar across and and um, studs, um, uh, the decking butts, but they puddle weld the steel, um, maybe they even count that as the weld, um, where they put the Nelson studs in, heck if I know how they did this. Um, then he put the steel uh, re reinforcement down, and then he put the concrete over it. For it all to interact, it has to interact properly as engineered, which would mean um, it's got to cross over three points. So this video was more about this, trying to show you how reactions are, how you can't push anything down. You can't have any deflection without some result, without some, without some uh, conflict with your connections, interaction with your connections. This dipping down alone then pulls the deck down above it, and you've got a new profile happening, and most is no longer interacting as strongly at each one of these joints above the deck. That's another question that I have to look at, is each deck, um, if you could find the... Uh, the, uh, the, the, the images, the um, inspection reports, you might see that each, each one of these above each deck that they put the pan seam right there above each one going up on 16, 17, and 18, which makes it inherently weak. There's no overlap between decks, even as far as their, uh, their, their strength design for loading down this one single column times two, column one, column two, however you like to look at it. All right, so I just wanted to show you that. 
you can't get deflection without some issues. And this is the same thing with, with all this stuff. I'm going to just exaggerate that for you to help you see it. And, of course, you know, don't forget this with, this span is great. And this material is just, it's not the scale. But it's allowing you to see what I like to call a, a, a real-world free body diagram. You get to see, when I press this, you get to see it in a, how graphs are done and engineering is done. But now you get to see it in real world, what it really looks like. The rotation there, the stresses there, you can't really see that, can you? You can imagine it. You can see the buckling that would happen, the bowing. Um, you see that this came down, how this would create a rotation over there. You've got the counter one on this side holding it, so that would ideally would balance it. And so now you'd have to figure out if you did both of them together and the force is, is, is applied here, how does that, how much of it is resisted? Um, this rotation resisted by the other one, by the counter one out there, that would be in the, in this member would be doing all the resistance because it's just, it's just, it's, uh, um, it's just a block, if you will, from that side to that, from this side to that side. Both of them, both of the outside ones equally loaded though, kind of canceling out in the middle, I think, um, theorized, but the outside one has no cancellation abilities. There's no other beam backing it up to stop it from rotating. So there's some rotational forces here. Could that cause that to shear at this point and start lowering the deck down? It would be times two here and here, depending on where the load was. Remember I talked about if they direct loaded the column when they were loading the, the, uh, the deck on 18. If they put a load right on top of that column, that then the stresses would be more on this one causing a rotation just just tracking down and helping you visualize stuff hope it worked i don't know i'll probably get beat up by a few of you engineers on this but go ahead and bring it on